David Cassidy was huge back in the 70s. You would have been hard pressed to find a teenage girl back then who didn't have a poster of the teen heartthrob on their bedroom wall. He was the breakout star of the Partridge family, and even after the series wrapped up, his fame continued to grow. Despite living a life of luxury and glamour when the cameras were rolling, behind the scenes Cassidy was actually deeply troubled. Life in the limelight proved to be detrimental to his soul and his spirit. While on the surface it looked like he had it all – money, prestige, women – deep inside of his heart David felt empty, and eventually his bank account would start to look a lot like his heart. Today we're going to take a closer look at David Cassidy and the legacy he's left behind after his passing. He died in 2017, but following his death, some truly shocking revelations were made regarding his turbulent final years. Cassidy lied about having dementia to hide his alcoholism. In 2018, less than a year after his passing, a never-before-heard recording of the late Partridge family star revealed he had repeatedly lied about having dementia to cover up the fact that he was still severely dependent on alcohol. The recording was made just two months before Cassidy died from organ failure at 67. It's no secret that the last few years of his life were pretty rocky, although the rest of his life admittedly was equally filled with troubles and struggles. In the last five years of his life, the former teen heartthrob was arrested three times and charged with DUI. In 2014, he checked himself into a rehab facility and told his friends, family, and fans he had finally quit drinking. But according to that damning audio recording, it was all one big elaborate lie. Cassidy was taking part in the production of a documentary called David Cassidy, The Last Session, when the recording was made. He had called up the producers after being rushed to a hospital with some kind of acute illness. He explained to A&E producer Sarah Lena Weinfeld that he had a liver disease and that there were no signs he was suffering from dementia at that stage in his life. His faltering physical health condition and his memory problems were both connected to his alcoholism. In that recorded call, Cassidy Cassidy admitted to lying about his drinking in an attempt to cover up the sadness and emptiness he was experiencing. Before his passing, Cassidy had even appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show to talk about his experience with dementia and to alleviate some of his fans' worries. Producers of the documentary were genuinely surprised to hear Cassidy's confession. Most people in his life believed he was sober, but in truth, he drank heavily up until the last few months of his life. Former Partridge Family co-star Danny Bonaducci, who has also had his own personal struggles with addiction over the years, says he wasn't surprised to hear about Cassidy's dishonesty. Part of alcoholism is lying, Bonaducci explained. When you're an addict, you know you can't be honest with people. You say what you want them to hear. Quick side note, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And stay tuned, because we're going to take you through the highs and lows of Cassidy's career. Cassidy's parents were also entertainers. It's not surprising Cassidy ended up being one of the biggest stars of the 70s. Both of his parents were also successful entertainers. His father, Jack Cassidy, was a singer and his mother, Evelyn Ward, was an actress. His parents split when he was just a boy, and his dad ended up marrying actress Shirley Jones. David Cassidy would rise to fame alongside Jones. In fact, they were the only two members of their fictional musical group who actually performed, recorded, and toured. The Partridge family mirrored real life. When Jones and Cassidy were cast in The Partridge Family, along with Danny Bonaducci and Susan Day, it was first unclear if David could actually sing. Producers really didn't care at the time. They cast him because of his androgynous looks, hoping he would be some kind of instant icon. But when given the opportunity to take the mic and show them what he was working with, the producers were pleasantly surprised to discover he had a great singing voice. That was the moment he became the band's lead singer. Cassidy launched a successful solo career. While the TV show was rising in popularity and the Partridge family recorded hits like I Think I Love You, David quickly became a full-blown teen superstar. It wasn't long before he started focusing on his own solo career. He released his first single, Cherish, a cover of a song by The Association, in 1972. The track blew up, reaching number 15 on the US charts and number 2 in the UK. He was an overnight success and embarked on international tours singing a mixture of Partridge family songs and his own solo material. During the Partridge family years, Cassidy recorded 10 albums with his co-star and 5 of his own solo work. Massive hits like 1973's Daydreamer helped his musical career overshadow his on-screen fame. 
selling out Madison Square Garden. Cassidy resented the fact he was labeled as some kind of teen idol. He desperately wanted to be taken seriously as the musician he was. It didn't help the press had come up with the term Cassidy Mania to describe the frenzy that followed him whenever he was in public. By 1972, he was routinely selling out stadiums of over 50,000 people. Cassidy once sold out Madison Square Garden in New York in just one day. His fans were so hysterical, they actually caused a riot during that show. And when the same story unfolded in Australia at Melbourne's Cricket Ground in 1974, people even tried to have him deported. Cassidy Mania Takes Its First Life Cassidy's fans didn't adore him like any other celebrity. Their obsession with him was borderline psychotic. His fan base's passion was so intense it often became dangerous. In 1974, at a show at White City Stadium in London, over 800 people were injured when a crowd rushed the stage. A 14-year-old girl named Bernadette Whelan died four years later as a result of injuries she sustained at that show. That was the beginning of David's downfall. He recalled that was the moment he decided to quit touring and acting on The Partridge Family. Fame had gotten to be too much for him. It wasn't what he signed up for, although it wouldn't be long before the allure of Spotlight drew him back in. The Partridge family wrapped in 74, and Cassidy transitioned over to focusing on his music. From 1975 to 76, he released three hit-packed solo albums to critical acclaim. He didn't entirely give up acting either. In 1978, he guest-starred in an episode of Police Story. He even earned an Emmy for that performance. It was so successful, the network gave Cassidy his own show, Man Undercover, which premiered a few months later. Unfortunately, the series lasted only one season. Viewers really weren't into Cassidy being in a drama. By the 1980s, Cassidy was dirt broke. Even though he had numerous hit albums under his belt and was one of the biggest stars of the 70s, by the 80s, Cassidy could barely make ends meet. Maybe it was because of the fact that he couldn't find any decent acting roles anymore, or because his last several albums failed to chart in the US. Either way, it's clear he didn't save up much cash from his Partridge family days. To pay the bills, Cassidy got involved in musical theater. He toured with the cast of Little Johnny Jones, but when it came time for the show to hit Broadway, he was swapped out with Donny Osmond, following numerous negative reviews of his lackluster performance. Cassidy's Marriages David married Kay Lenz in 1977, but in 1981, the couple filed for divorce. He married his second wife, Meryl Tans, in 84. Their relationship was actually the inspiration for his album Romance. After getting married, they became partners rearing horses and operating a horse racing business for a couple of years. But by 1986, their marriage had already fallen apart, and they divorced. That same year, Cassidy fathered a child with model Sherry Williams. He was never really there for his daughter, Katie. In fact, she was fully raised by Williams and her stepfather, Richard Benedon. Being absent from his daughter's life would haunt him for the rest of his life. In 1991, Cassidy married his third wife, Sue Schifrin Cassidy. They had one child together, Bo, who went on to follow in his father's footsteps by becoming a singer-songwriter broke, divorced, and drinking himself to death. David and Sue might have seemed like soulmates, but in 2014, they filed for divorce after 24 years of marriage. Just a year later, Cassidy filed for bankruptcy. The divorce was finaled in 2016. It was during this turbulent time that his drinking started taking its toll on every part of his life. In 2017, Cassidy said he was battling with dementia, although as we've already learned, that was a lie. It was also revealed he was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and his Partridge family checks were drying up. To to cope with his mounting pain and emptiness, he leaned harder on the bottle for comfort. As a result of his drinking, he racked up several DUIs and even a hit-and-run charge. He was rushed to the hospital in November of 2017. Because of his alcoholism, he desperately needed a liver transplant, but his kidneys were also shutting down. Left with no other options, the doctors placed him in a medically-induced coma. He passed away several days later while surrounded by his family. David Cassidy's story is nothing short of heartbreaking. It seems like he could never find the meaningful existence he wanted. But we'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite David Cassidy song? Cherish? I think I love you? Something else? Let us know in the comments below. And before you go, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Tap the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.